With the concepts of induction and conduction now understood, students can see a practical demonstration of it using an object called the electroscope. Electroscopes come in various shapes and sizes. This is a fairly common one. We start with a glass container here, and inside of it we have a metal conductor, and we have a rubber stopper here which will insulate the conductor from the glass and hence from the ground and two tiny gold leaves here with very little mass. We will be able to measure the sign and the magnitude of the electric charge of an object that we bring near or that touches the electroscope. Uh, we'll start with when there's no charges nearby and you basically have a neutral system. The gold leaves will hang straight down like this due to their own mass. We will be showing here how electroscopes can be charged by both conduction and induction. Electroscopes are not new. Here's a picture of an antique one from the year 1878. And you can pretty much tell the date by the uh, sleeve here on the person operating the electroscope. You can see here, here's the top of it where they have a little uh, sphere. Here are the two gold leaves. Instead of a beaker-like apparatus, they have a tube here. And this object right here is a charged rod. Here's the setup for charging an electroscope using conduction. We will start up here with the rod that has a negative charge on it, negative 4E. We will be bringing it close and we will actually touch this sphere up here. Based on what we've talked about earlier, the excess negative charge will distribute itself as far as it can. So it will start at the conductor at the top, at the sphere, spread out down until it reaches the gold leaves, and then each gold leaf will have a net negative charge. Since they both have the same charge, we will expect them to repel each other. The negatively charged rod is brought next to the electroscope. It touches the sphere. The extra negative charge spreads out down the rod and distributes itself equally amongst the two leaves. Since they both have a negative charge on them, they will repel each other and you can see how they've spread out here. So now you have a net negative charge on the electroscope. The other interesting point is the rod here now has less negative charge than when it started because it gave some of it up to the electroscope. And because of the conservation of charge, if this gains negative charges, this must lose the negative charges. Now this exact same result can be obtained if you use a positive net charge. In that case, you'd have po excess positive charge here. They would still repel. It would still look like that. We'll talk a little bit later about how to figure out whether you had a positive or a negatively charged rod.